Welcome to N5 Electrotechniques, and in this series of videos, we'll be taking a look at a past exam paper, and we'll be looking at the questions and answers. Together with that, we'll also cover the notes that are related to those questions. Now, our first concept is called pole pitch. Now, pole pitch is the distance between the centers of the main poles. So from the center of one line running from the main pole to the center of the other line on the second main pole, the distance between them is known as pole pitch. Question 1.1, explain the term pole pitch as it applies to electrical machines. Pole pitch is the center to center distance between the two main poles. Once again, in our illustration, yeah, we've got an eight pole machine, which means there are four pairs. And if we take an imaginary line through one main pole and an imaginary line through the other main pole, the distance between them would be known as the pole pitch. Our compensating windings are found at slotted inside the pole shoes. Question 1.2, differentiate between the function of commutating poles and compensating windings in a DC machine. Commutating poles are used to improve commutation, while compensating windings are used to minimize armature reaction. Our next concept is lap winding and wave winding. Now, if we look at the illustration, the armature conductors in the armature assembly could either be wave wound or lap wound. For a lap wound armature assembly, the number of parallel paths is the same as the number of poles. It is used for low voltage and high current applications. The small letter C represents the number of parallel paths. Therefore, for lap winding, it'll be two times small letter P, which is the pole pairs. For a wave wind armature, there are only two parallel paths formed and thus only two brushes. It is used for high voltage and low current applications. And the number of parallel paths is always equal to two for wave winding. Now, the concept on interpoles, now interpoles are the smaller poles found in between the main poles. Question 1.3, how can the number of parallel paths in a lap wound armature be increased by using interpoles? Our next concept is called demagnetizing and cross magnetizing. Now here are two permanent magnets with a north pole and a south pole. Lines of flux running from north to south and the circle represents our armature assembly. Now we've got this main axis, which is known as the geometric neutral axis, and that can be shifted to the magnetic neutral axis. Now brushes are shifted forwards for a generator and backwards for a motor. And here is the center of the axes when they meet each other in the middle. Now when the armature conductors carry current, they will cause a distortion and flux and will cause the geometric neutral axis to shift to the magnetic neutral axis. Now when current passes through these armature conductors, the magnetic field will be clockwise and opposes the lines of flux running from north to south. When current passes through these armature conductors, the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise and also opposes direction of lines of flux running from north to south. So therefore our main field running from north to south and then we've got our demagnetizing field, which is in the opposite direction. As we can see, there are one, two, three, and four quadrants where we have our mechanical angle. Now, theta m represents the mechanical angle, and there are four of them. To calculate the electrical angle, it will be the mechanical angle multiplied by the number of pole pairs. The remaining conductors in the armature assembly produce a magnetic field that points downwards and therefore is crossing the main magnetic field lines. So if we have our main magnetic field line running from north to south, the cross magnetizing would cross over those lines of flux. Question 1.4, a four pole DC motor has a wave connected armature with 860 conductors. The brushes have been displaced through three angular degrees from the geometrical neutral axis. If the armature current is 150 amps, calculate the following. 
So the first part of the question, we need to determine the demagnetizing and cross-magnetizing ampere turns per pole. And then the additional field current required to neutralize this demagnetization if the field windings are 1,100. So the first part of the question, to determine the demagnetizing and cross-magnetizing ampere turns per pole, we're first going to determine the electrical degrees, which is the mechanical degrees of three, multiplied by the pole pairs, which is two. Therefore, the electrical degrees is six degrees. <clears throat> this is a four pole machine, therefore there are two pairs. It is wave wound, therefore C is equal to two. Z, the total number of armature conductors is 860. The mechanical degrees is three degrees and the armature current of 150 amps. So to determine the demagnetizing ampere turns per pole, there are two fractions. In our first fraction, we've got the current multiplied by Z over four times C times P. Our second fraction is four times theta over 360. The armature current of 150 multiplied by 860 for the armature conductors, divided by four multiplied by two, which is the number of parallel pods, and two times, which is the pole pairs. Our next fraction, there are four quadrants for the angles. Therefore, it's going to be four multiplied by the electrical degrees of six over 360. Therefore, the demagnetizing ampere turns per pole is 537,5. So now to determine the cross magnetizing, it'll be the total, which is this fraction over here, minus the demagnetizing value, and that will give us the cross magnetizing. To calculate the total, it is 150 multiplied by 860 divided by 4 times 2 times 2. Subtract the demagnetizing amount. Therefore, the cross magnetizing ampere turns per pole is 7,525. Now, in the second part of this question, the additional field current required to neutralize this demagnetization if the field winding has 1,100 turns per pole. So if you look at our formula, we have the magnetomotive force is equal to the number of turns multiplied by the current. So to calculate the current, it'll be the MMF over the number of turns. And the value we're going to be using is the demagnetizing value of 537,5 divided by the number of turns of 1,100. Therefore, the current required is 0, 0,489 amps. Right, the next concept is on DC shunt generators and DC shunt motors. Looking at this circuit diagram for a shunt generator, it is producing armature current and therefore supplying load current. A small amount of current runs through the shunt winding. Now for a generator, if we look at the operation, the EMF is always in the same direction as the current. Therefore, it's always positive for a generator. So if we look at our formulas, the generated EMF is equal to the terminal voltage plus the volt drop across the armature. To calculate the armature current, it'll be the supply current plus the shunt current. Now for a DC shunt motor, a motor draws current from the supply and therefore draws armature current. A small amount of current goes through the shunt winding. If we look at the formulas for, to calculate the generated EMF for a shunt motor, it'll be the terminal voltage minus the volt drop across the armature. And IA is equal to the supply current minus the shunt current. Okay, this is our last question. Uh, question 1.5, a six pole lap wound 350 volt shunt excited DC machine draws an armature current of 7.5 amps at no load and runs at 1,300 revs per minute. When loaded, the motor draws an armature current of 70 amps from the supply and runs at 1,300 revs per minute. If the resistance of the armature circuit is 0, 0,6 ohms and there are 1,100 armature conductors, we need to determine the following questions. Now, in 1.5.1, we need to calculate the generated EMF. It is a six pole machine, therefore there are three pairs. The number of parallel pods that is lap one, so it'll be two times three is equal to six. 
a terminal voltage of 350, no load armature current of 7.5 amps, and a speed of 1,300 revs per minute. The armature current under load is 70 amps. So therefore, we don't have to calculate the armature current as given to us. And the speed is 1,300 revs per minute. A small resistance for the armature at 0 0.6 ohms. And the number of conductors is 1,100. <clears throat> so the formula for a motor to calculate the generated EMF it is the terminal voltage minus the volt drop across the armature. The terminal voltage of 350 minus, now the armature current is 70 amps under load, multiplied by the armature resistance of 0 0.6. Therefore, the generated EMF is 308 volts. Now, the second question, calculate the useful flux per pole. We have already calculated the generated EMF, so the formula we use is the EMF equation. To get the flux per pole on its own, it will be the generated EMF multiplied by C times 60, all over 2 times P times Z times N. The generated EMF of 308 volts multiplied by the number of parallel poles, it is lap one, therefore 2 times 3 will give us 6 over times 60, divided by 2 times 3, the total conductor is 1,100 and the speed of 1,300. Therefore, simplified, the flux per pole in Weber or milliweber is 12,923. Now, in the third part of this question, 1.5.3, calculate the useful torque developed by the machine in Newton meters. The torque formula is 0,318 multiplied by the armature current the total number of conductors, the pole pairs, and the flux per pole, all divided by the number of parallel paths. So therefore, 0.318 multiplied by the armature current under load of 70 amps, multiplied by 1,100 conductors, there are three pole pairs, and the flux per pole in Weber is 0 0.0129. Divided by the number of parallel paths, which is six because it's lap round. Therefore, the torque produced is 157,935 Newton meters. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and share. Thank you.